Iran News Now Iran's president dies in helicopter crash. Michael Cohen's cross-examination ends. Top stories of the day. According to Iranian state media, a helicopter crash claimed the lives of President Ebrahim Raisi, Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdelayan, and other officials. There was no stated reason as to why the crash occurred. In a mountainous region near the Azerbaijan border in the country's northwest, the group's chopper went down in thick fog. As of right now, Mohammad Mokber, Iran's first vice president, is in charge, according to NPR's Peter Kenyon, who spoke to UP first. The Iranian cabinet praised Raisi, calling him a hardworking president who made the greatest sacrifice for his country. Some were surprised, but others were wary of Raisi because of her reputation as a strict Muslim. Many people hold him in high esteem because of his involvement in the 1988 execution of political prisoners in Iran during the Iran-Iraq War. His title is Enforcer of the Supreme Leader. His recent endorsement of a harsh crackdown on women sparked widespread demonstrations. Some have claimed that these demonstrations posed the greatest danger to the Islamic Republic while he was president. The leadership of Israel is in disarray at the same time that Iran's government is changing. Even Netanyahu's war cabinet allies are claiming that the prime minister lacks a plan to depose Hamas as Gaza's leader. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz threatened to resign from his position in three weeks unless the government came up with a fresh strategy for the conflict. Following Raisi's death, Israeli experts do not anticipate any significant shifts. Throughout the Gaza battle, the Houthis and Hezbollah, proxies of Iran, have been fighting a low-level battle with Israel, according to NPR's Daniel Estrin. However, the current volatility in Iran is causing a great deal of anxiety in Israel. In the meantime, around 800,000 Gazans have fled Rafa since Israel's military campaign there began two weeks ago. Today marks the fourth day of testimony for Michael Cohen, the main witness in the criminal trial of former President Donald Trump. Everyone is expecting this to be his final public appearance. The prosecution will have the opportunity to refocus their inquiry once the defense attorneys for Trump have completed their cross-examination. The Trump Trials podcast from NPR lays forth the background, summarizes Cohen's evidence thus far, and explains why privacy and sex could decide the outcome. The former president's defense has been mum on the subject of whether or not he will testify. Speaking with NPR's Andrea Bernstein, other defense attorneys expressed their belief that Trump would be irresponsible to do so. Bernstein argues that Trump's actions throughout his prior trials demonstrate his lack of faith in his attorneys and his belief that no one can present his case adequately. There are ups and downs to being a mother, including issues with mental health and pelvic floor rehabilitation. New moms in the United States may find the time immediately following giving birth, referred to as the fourth trimester, to be particularly lonely. It is expensive and support services are disjointed. This is something that the new Michigan Postpartum Care Community Fourth Tri Sanctuary hopes to alter by creating an atmosphere that promotes healing, education, and bonding for moms and their babies for as long as 18 weeks with the help of licensed postpartum doulas and other medical professionals. Ali Lapatina, a photographer and mother of twins aged five, shared her thoughts with other moms at the daycare facility regarding the importance of this support for women. Take a look at some pictures and learn about their experiences with postpartum care of the future.